Hi everyone. Uh, thank you for joining our live web webcast today titled Get Her Study to Marketing on LinkedIn. Uh, my name is Christy Tran. I'm a demand gen marketing manager here at LinkedIn uh, focused on our APAC region. So just a little bit of background about this webinar. This webinar came as a request to our marketing team from our sales team to provide basic information to marketers who aren't aware of the power of LinkedIn beyond their own profile. We took this opportunity to create a webinar with basic information about LinkedIn marketing solution and wanted to make it available to everyone. I'm very excited to have with me today Jennifer Blessing, who leads our product marketing efforts for the marketing solution team in APAC. Jennifer has been in digital advertising for over 15 years, the majority of that time in the Silicon Valley, in a variety of roles for agency, media planning, media sales, and marketing. She's been with LinkedIn for five years and have worked across all of our major product launches during that time. When Jennifer is not working as a product evangelist, she enjoys traveling and hitting the gym. She's quite a city, and like most of her Estonian counterpart, loves a good cup of coffee. But more importantly, she's passionate about documenting her Instagram with lovely food pictures. So with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Jennifer to walk us through the beginner's guide to marketing on LinkedIn. Take it away, Jennifer. Thanks, Christy. Thanks for the introduction and to everyone for joining us today. As a product marketing manager, I love sharing information um, with our peers in marketing about how we can help you with your goals. Uh, so today, as Christy said, it's a beginner's guide. So if you're unfamiliar with what you can do on LinkedIn to reach your audience, this is the right uh, webcast for you to be watching and listening to. So I'll take you through four key elements today. Um, first, we'll talk about the mission and evolution of LinkedIn, um, just to give you a flavor for why, why we build the products the way we build them and how we put members first and across everything that we do. And then we'll talk about audience engagement, in this case specifically um, what that mindset is for professionals when they're on LinkedIn, which is very important for you to keep in mind as you're thinking about campaigns um, and what you want to be um, showcasing on, on the LinkedIn network. Then I'll walk through the five products that are available to marketers, and then we'll end on a checklist for getting started, just a few simple tips um, to keep in mind as you build your campaign. So we'll start with the first um, point, the mission and the evolution of LinkedIn. So, um, A very brief statement that kind of sums up our mission is that we're looking to connect the world's professionals to make them more productive and successful. So regardless of what we do at LinkedIn, what team you're on or what project you're working on, um, we as an organization always try to put the member first in everything that we do and first in the way that we can help them achieve this goal of being more productive and successful. So as you think of LinkedIn.com and the types of things that people do there, we try to deliver on that mission in three main pillars. The first one is identity. So having an identity for yourself on LinkedIn to set yourself apart as far as your work life goes because what you do at work and how you want to represent yourself may be different than when you're at the bar or when you're hanging out with your family um, at a barbecue. And then from that identity um, that you have with your colleagues and potential business partners, you start to network with them and building that relationship of trust in a digital environment. And then from that network, you can share and gain knowledge and information so that you become better, smarter, faster, and just in general, more successful in your professional life. So those are the three key ways to try to bring it all together. And as such, this has really evolved the site over time. Um, I joined LinkedIn five years ago, as Christy said. So back in 2010, this is actually a really old screenshot of what LinkedIn used to look like. And if you look at the activity, it's quite different than what you'll see today in, in the next slide. But the majority of the, the opportunity um, to get information was around who was connecting to whom and um, who was joining what companies, what was going on from like a profile update standpoint with your network of connections. And today, that is still available, but also much, much more. Um, LinkedIn's really evolved to become mobile everywhere, as well as desktop. So we have iOS and Android apps, so you can connect with LinkedIn on the go, as well as on your desktop. And then the content um, is really all about knowledge and information and sharing of, of um, details that will help you be smarter. So a lot of that comes from peers, thought leaders, and brands. So I'll walk you through what that looks like so that you can get a better feeling of what a day in the life of LinkedIn is like. Um, a lot of 
um, even my friends and family, when they start looking at everything you can do on LinkedIn, sometimes they're surprised. So I'll just give you a little snapshot of the different areas content plays, which can also help you when you're building your campaigns because then you'll have a better understanding of the environment. Um, and before I get to that, just to really quickly show you, as a result of the changes that we've made over time, our member base continues to grow. Um, to give you visibility into that, there's approximate, there's over 380 million professionals um, on the network right now, and we're continuing to join at a rapid pace. We have over 200,000 professionals um, joining you every day. So this is what they're doing. Um, first of all, some of the content that people share is just from each other, so peer-to-peer -peer sharing. Um, this all lives in the news feed, which is on your homepage of LinkedIn, and it's visible on your desktop as well as mobile. People share a variety of news and information, and if you're not already doing so, I highly uh, encourage you to do so. You can share news that you find interesting, links to that, and your thoughts in a brief sentence or two about that. Um, I'll just show you actually kind of a real world example. This was a piece of information I found when I was scrolling um, on the mobile app earlier this week and thinking about um, the, the webinar today. Uh, I just grabbed a screenshot of it. So one of my connections, Andy, um, because we're in the same industry, the news and information that we share is probably really relevant to each other. Being in product marketing and in social media, um, I always like caring about what's happening at Facebook and Twitter. So this information that Andy shared was really valuable, um, especially to me, uh, not just because someone I know shared it, but it's about industry relevant information. Um, so that's just kind of an example, and it's good for the person receiving it, of course, because you're staying up to date with what your peers know, but it also makes your peers and yourself, when you're sharing information, be seen as thought leaders. So that's kind of peer-to-peer -peer sharing in the newsfeed. Um, in addition to people sharing, brands share as well. So a few years ago, about five years ago, um, we launched um, hubs for brands to be able to showcase their news and information so that they could basically broadcast it into the news feed, just like people as well. So we call these pages company pages, and that's a screenshot uh, as an example from Marketo. But the main purpose of the company page isn't to drive people to the company page. Uh, the main purpose is it's your hub for your content so that you can get it in the news feed. So here's just an example of the types of content that Marketo shares. They try to have a variety in there so that the people who follow and are naturally brand ambassadors can get all the good information about their brand, but then they also um, are able to sponsor the content and reach people that aren't already familiar with them. So we'll talk more about that as we go into the products, but it's an important part of the ecosystem of the content on LinkedIn also comes from brands. So quick share of that there. Uh, the next one is um, an initiative that we started about two years ago called the Influencer Program, and we wanted to be able to offer um, everyone on LinkedIn the ability to learn from the greats and the illuminaries, um, business leaders and people that they admire. So we created a, a platform where basically they could write more than a short snippet and sharing a link to somewhere else. Uh, we basically created an environment for them to write long-form posts call it publishing on LinkedIn. And so these thought leaders, such as Sir Martin Sorrell that uh, you see here from WPP, as well as many others like Ariana Huffington, Richard Branson, um, and even Prime Minister Modi and Barack Obama all have accounts where they're able to share this longer form content. So this is just an example of the type of content he's created here, Sir Martin Sorrell. And then um, you, when you, you see it in your news feed, you can click through and read in more detail. So it's, Bespoke content created by the thought leaders on LinkedIn for LinkedIn members, so you can't get it anywhere else. Um, and then you can follow the people you're most interested in, kind of hearing what their thoughts are on the news and information that you think is um, their involvement and would be good for you to know. So that's the influencer program and sharing um, from thought leaders. And then as we launched this program, we realized it's not just the famous people and the Fortune 500 CMOs, for example, um, that have really, inform really helpful information, news, and knowledge to share. We all do. And so LinkedIn rolled out publishing for everyone. So anyone can go onto LinkedIn as long as you have a LinkedIn account and share information uh, that you think your network would find valuable. It's pretty simple to do that. 
And I just have a screenshot from my homepage to show you how it happens. Um, you just click towards the right inside the little bubble that I highlighted. You click create a post. You go to a page where you write it. And then you can become an author yourself right on LinkedIn. Um, so that's just an example of how you can be creating thought leadership and everyone sharing knowledge so that we become more productive and successful. And then lastly, um, another knowledge-related element is LinkedIn acquired lynda.com earlier, earlier this year. So watch the space for how we integrate more closely with Lynda. But Lynda is a fantastic resource for professionals who are looking to um, upskill their, their knowledge around different topics. So it's all online, on-demand um, courses, classes you can take. So for example, um, if you want to brush up on how to create pivot tables, there's some Excel. Um, short videos you can watch, or you can go deeper into things like um, engineering, coding, learn, learning JavaScript, um, or even marketing basics and, and marketing strategies um, that you may want to cover depending on where you are in your career and what you may need to brush up or learn from scratch. So that's lynda.com. So I'll transition here now. Um, hopefully this provided a good context for the fact that there's a ton of content happening on LinkedIn. So when you're thinking about how you want to engage with the members on the platform, uh, this is the type of information that your brand messaging will be competing for um, share of voice against. So let's talk a little bit about what the member mindset is since they're um, creating and reading through so much great content on LinkedIn. So first of all, they come to LinkedIn because they expect content and they trust the content that they see here. And the top three types of content that get the most engagement relate to current affairs, career information, and updates from brands. And these types of um, content actually have a seven times higher engagement rate than content related specifically to a next job. So it's really about the long term and how they can be successful as well as the short term in being successful in their current role and also helping elevate their own uh, professional identity, their personal brand on LinkedIn. So if we think about how this differs from other social environments just for a moment. So I was looking at trending content on Facebook last uh, night to see what are, to really just drive home a few examples of the content differences. So types of content that was really popular on Facebook the last few days um, and it is a bit of an Australian um, slant here since uh, Facebook knows I, I live in Australia. But the rabbitos were in the news. R evidently, there was a scandal with Ryan Reynolds' photos of his baby. There's a lot of talk about Coca-Cola, Amy Schumer. So as you can see, it's very sports, um, also politics, and entertainment-focused information that trends often on on Facebook, and of course, we can't forget about all of the cat memes that you expect um, and, and probably demand from your social media experience on Facebook. Whereas on Twitter, you're going to have similar types of hashtags, lots of talk about different sporting events, um, different just trends in social media. Being a foodie, as Christy mentioned, I thought it was interesting that Nutella was trending this week on Twitter as well. And then you compare that, or contrast it rather, to the types of content that was trending this past week in APAC um, among business professionals. And as you can see here, the types of content is incredibly different and a lot more focused on how they can be more productive and successful. So you see time management, self-esteem, there were articles being shared, are you relying on too much Excel reporting, do you have emotion, emotional intelligence, how to avoid body language blunders. They talk about companies like VMware, products like iPad. Uh, so a very different type of information that is being popular in the news feed right now compared to other social networks. So you may just want to keep that in mind so that you understand the space you're playing in when you're creating content or you're leveraging your existing content on LinkedIn. So from there, hopefully it's a good segue into how you can actually get your content and your advertising on LinkedIn. And we have five products that offer this. Uh, so I'll walk through it with you now. This is really just meant to be an overview of how they can all do. Uh, 
play different roles in, in your marketing plan. Um, I can probably talk for hours about each one, um, so I'll keep it as brief as I can just so you can get a flavor. And um, we have lots more information on our marketing solutions website so you can look at case studies or get deeper into the weeds. Um, so if we think about our products like ingredients for a fantastic pizza, um, I don't meet many people who don't like pizza. Most everyone enjoys a good slice. Uh, but everyone has their own favorite ingredients, and your your ingredients for your marketing campaign are kind of in that same light. So as I'm walking through these and I'm talking about objectives, keep in mind it really depends upon your own tastes, if you will, and your own objectives, the resources you have available. So if, if for example, just like in real life when you're ordering a pizza, Somebody's going to like anchovies. For me, I don't like pineapple on my pizza. So it's going to be different for everyone, and this is really just meant to give you an overview. If we think about the products in terms of what we're trying to do with them um, to help our, our customers, we want to be the most effective place um, platform for marketers to engage with professionals. So this is, of course, when we talk about professionals, the automatic um, thoughts are oftentimes around B2B, and we are a great place to be for B2B um, campaigns. But if you are looking to reach B2C, uh, especially for high-end consumers who are going to have that type of income and inclination to buy certain products, especially if they take a long time um, to make that decision-making journey, LinkedIn is a great environment for that too. And oftentimes, uh, I would say, um, it, you can really stand out in a B2C context um, because people aren't always expecting it on LinkedIn. So if you approach it with the right um, content, it can be quite effective here. So let's go into the products now without any further ado. Um, and as we kind of talked through them, um, the main marketing objectives that we can kind of bucket them into parent objectives, if you will, is all around generating awareness, driving consideration, driving traffic, leads, advocacy. Um, so, we've all heard about the marketing funnel changing. Uh, it's not just a funnel. Um, in fact, the funnel's been talked about for a long time. And a lot of our customers say, well, it's actually more like a web. You go down a string, you get stuck, you make a decision, you, um, we're in a web. That's true. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a web. Uh, but for others, it's more like a cycle. You generate awareness, you get them to to convert and then you're in the cycle of getting them to renew and become advocates. So yes, it, it is like a cycle as well. And then you may have a bad day or a really hard campaign and it may just feel like a hot mess, which is kind of what my kitchen looks like when I try to cook. Uh, I'm good at taking pictures of food, not making them. Um, but we're going to talk about it in a funnel perspective for today, just to keep it nice and simple. So. Um, if you have, think about your upper funnel objectives like reaching new audiences, driving awareness, driving traffic, we have some products that fit really nicely in that area. Mid funnel, so trying to drive engagement, trying to nurture the lower funnel as you look to acquire them. That's kind of the bucket, but I will say depending on the creative and the content you have, you can make it work for you depending on um, what it is you're actually sharing and putting in front of the members. But these are the basics and in general how most of our customers at LinkedIn um, think about our products reaching those bucketed objectives with certain products. So let's start with sponsored updates. Sponsored Updates is our flagship product at LinkedIn. We've had it for, I think, two or three years now. Uh, I mentioned it very briefly in, in the overview when I was talking about the importance of content from brands in the ecosystem because people are on LinkedIn and looking at companies. We're all looking at companies in our space or companies that we need help from. Um, so content from companies is important. And so we realized that you don't want to just reach your existing followers, your existing fans, those people who are already giving you a 9 and a 10 on an NPS score when you, you're trying to distribute your content. You're also looking to reach a broader audience, get them aware of something going on at your company, a piece of information, and influence them into making some kind of action. So sponsored updates is how you can do that. It gets that content right in the news feed of the members amongst all that other content that they're there and trusting. So the mindset here is really rich. These are native ads, so people are incredibly engaged, and as you can see, it's quite understated. The whole goal with sponsored updates is to make your content feel native, so hopefully if, you, if you've got that content that is going to be providing rele is relevant and provides value, it should look really slick and seamless in these environments. 
Um, it is available on desktop as well as um, mobile, as you can see. Uh, a little more information uh, as you think about considering sponsored updates um, and, and the type of, so you understand how the product works from there. Um, when you go to, to run a sponsored update campaign, you're, you are in a bidded environment. Um, so we have a relevancy algorithm that hopefully puts the right content in front of the right audience. But you can also use the LinkedIn targeting to get to, to further refine who you're trying to reach with that content. Remember, people are here to build their identity, and so we're able to use that data because we're a data company at our at our core. We're able to use that data um, to build targeting segments, so you can get the right content in front of the right people. Um, so that is sponsored updates in a nutshell. Again, it's our flagship product, so I could go on and on there, and hopefully we can take a few questions um, and give you more information there. Um, so what can you achieve with sponsored updates now that you know how it works? Um, it, it's our most flexible product. I kind of had to stop putting bullet points and bubbles on this slide because it was getting pretty busy. Uh, it really is so flexible because it depends on your creativity and the content that you have. So if you are doing thought leadership pieces that are just going to be driving traffic, driving brand awareness, driving awareness about a new product, it works fantastically for that. If you have white papers or other elements you're trying to get people to download, it's great for that. You can use it to drive product demos, event attendance. We use it actually to drive attendance to this webinar today. It's great from lead generation when you're driving people to a landing page to try and get them to, to take some sort of action. Um, so it's very versatile. Uh, one thing to think about when you are creating um, content is just keep it short, keep it snappy, keep it, sn we like to say snackable. Um, so another food reference, but we've been saying it long before I created the slides for this. Um, remember that we all kind of live in an ADD world and professionals are really busy. So when you're sharing content in a sponsored update, you want to keep it short, you want to keep it punchy and make people want to click and take action. Either going to your landing page, liking what you've done, um, sharing what you've done, or making a comment. So I want to give a few quick tips because so many of our customers have told me they get a lot of value out of sponsored updates So um, because of its versatility. So just a couple of quick tips that you're going to, if you're thinking this could be a product that works for you in your next campaign. Um, when you're thinking about content in general on LinkedIn, think about what you want to accomplish in your campaign and create your content for that. But you can also post organically to your followers. So think about the long-term and content you may want to be sharing as well. If you're trying to leverage that news feed to create trust and preference, you want to think about not just spamming them and getting them to download something or attend one event. You want to think about what you as a brand are going to represent over time and why they're going to want to keep interacting with you on the platform. So definitely leverage your organic updates as well to, to keep nurturing people who are already following your brand, but then as well um, be sharing the types of content that is going to help you from a thought leadership perspective all the way through to uh, lead acquisition. Um, another thing to think about is when you're sharing that content on your company page, go back to your company page and look at the type of content um, that you shared and then the engagement of, of what people are doing. There's the ability for people to leave comments on, on posts that you share. Um, whether they're organic or whether they're paid. So it's a great listening opportunity as well. We're always looking to listen to our, our audiences as marketers, and so you can get kind of instant feedback um, in, in terms of what people are saying here. And the great thing about LinkedIn as opposed to other social media is people aren't really coming here expecting customer service support. Um, it's not a CRM type of worry where you're going to have to think, do I need someone on 24-7? Um, it's just not... It, it gets to this mindset, again, you don't want your your peers to see you as a complainer. So people aren't coming on here saying, I have a bug or I have an issue or my, my plane is late. Um, it's, a, it's very much more about learning and sharing and gaining knowledge. And in general, you do sometimes you do get complainers, but in general, people kind of behave in that way. Um, so definitely look at the types of content and the types of comments you're getting on that content as you think about what types of content do you want to create in the future. So that is sponsored updates. So I'll transition now to talk about another native uh, product on LinkedIn, and that's sponsored in-mail. 
Sponsored Inhale is one of our longest standing products on the platform. Um, it works simply by being available in the inbox on LinkedIn. If you think about it, uh, I guess the closest analogy is, is email marketing, but email in your LinkedIn inbox. So um, hopefully you've seen little notifications um, when you're on when you're on LinkedIn um, that showcase like you've got you've got mail basically. Now peers to peers can send messages for free. It's just part of the networking element of LinkedIn. But then brands can do it as well, and so that is a paid advertising opportunity for you. It can come from a brand, or as you see in this example from um, Unisim out of Singapore, it can also come from a person at that company. Uh, but this is a paid promotion, um, and it will even say, if you look over in the left-hand rail here on the, the mobile version, it will even say sponsored in here. So it's quite transparent that you're being targeted. Just like sponsored updates, you can leverage the, the profile data to reach the right people. One of the cool benefits of sponsored email is that it takes up uh, more real estate on the page. So if you have a more complicated offer than, say, 140 characters, it's going to be able to get across. Sponsored updates, I'm sorry, sponsored in mail is a really great place where you can go into more detail around how, to, how your services or your products are going to be providing value and try and drive some engagement there. Um, sponsored updates are also pretty exclusive. Um, we limit it because we don't want the space to be spam. We want people to continue to feel trust and safety in all aspects of their interactions on LinkedIn. So um, an individual can only receive a sponsored message once every 60 days. That includes from you as well. So if you've messaged them once, uh, you can't message them again until 60 days have passed in this environment. Um, and let's see, uh, maybe I'll show you some of the benefits of sponsored in mail in the next slide here. So generally sponsored in mail is most often associated with kind of lower, mid and lower funnel initiatives because um, you have very strong call to actions um, in the space. So it's great for downloading white papers, driving leads, event attendance, and um, so these are just benefits from sponsored in-mail as well, so they kind of work together in that regard. But I even wanted to talk about a couple of other instances where I've seen customers having really great success. So if you think about those um, high consideration B2C customers. I've seen automotive campaigns do great here talking about an invitation to test drive a car. It feels very exclusive and it's very appealing to members here. I've also seen airlines and uh, financial institutions do a fantastic job talking about um, offers that they have. So um, if, when you think about offers and incentives, really that limited time element comes into play here. In meal feels very personal because it's in your inbox and it feels like it's it's a very personalized marketing message. So when you're thinking about the wording to put into play, keep that in mind too. Um, invitation, for example, is a really strong word um, that a lot of our customers use to try and, and get the uh, people to engage and feel special. Um, so a couple of quick tips around sponsored email. Um, I talked briefly about the 60-day rule. Uh, so some so if you're only relying on sponsored in-mail, you can't. Some of our customers buy only sponsored in-mail, um, but I would say that it really depends on their marketing objectives. Um, other customers, many customers actually have seen success by pairing these two products or multiple products. Um, since that sponsored in-mail is delivered to you, when you come on LinkedIn, it has 100% deliverability, unlike email when you're getting lists. So it's fantastic, but just like something in your inbox, you read it once, and if you don't take action, it's very easy to forget it. Um, sponsored in-mail has a fantastic open rate and click-through rate, so that's quite strong. But if, if, if you're going to be doing a marketing campaign over a period of time, um, you may want to be peppering sponsored updates in there as well so that it stays top of mind and they remember to go back to their inbox and see something and take action. Um, so pairing them together is a very strong opportunity to stay top of mind while still going into lots of detail within the, the end mail itself. Um, and while I'm on that, in case um, we have questions around it later, um, the performance on Inmail, as I mentioned, is quite good. Um, the open rates, for example, your typical open rates for email, if you compare it to that, you're doing a fantastic job if you're getting a 20% open rate. Um, 
our average campaigns, again, it varies by industry and the content and the wording in that subject line, which is so important, but our average open rates are between 25 and 30 percent, but I've seen many campaigns actually doubling that. So be very creative and careful as you're thinking about your, your subject line so you can drive um, the best results. And then the click-through rates um, are often double digits depending on what that call to action is and, and how um, good a job the marketers do around creating urgency. But I've seen uh, click-through rates from there in the double digits as well. Um, and so since I've talked a little bit about um, being careful with the wording there, I would say as you're, as you're testing sponsored in mail, be, be free to play with the tone and be authentic to your brand. I've seen some brands, including Microsoft, take a tongue-in-cheek at times or a little bit of humor. Um, I've seen other brands be very serious and focus on being exclusive. So you know your brand better and the personality you want your brand to, have, to exude. Uh, so keep that in mind. But also, don't be afraid to, 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 to play and to stand out um, with that creative wording. All right, so that is sponsored in mail. We think about some other products. Um, it's very important to also consider display. So LinkedIn is one of the few social networks that um, has special place on the site for IAD standard ads, which means if you're creating um, display units, it's very easy to get those included on LinkedIn to complement the campaigns you're running elsewhere on the web. So definitely take advantage of that, which are quite prominent um, on, the, on the desktop. Um, another thing I wanted to call attention to, which I think some marketers, if they're just getting their, their toe in the water on display on LinkedIn, they may not realize they have available. We have other ad units that look extremely native. Um, they're designed to really feel like a seamless flow to the environment, yet is actually um, a banner ad. We call these spotlight ads because you're putting a spotlight on the individual and your logo. Um, so if you look on the screenshot here, you see a couple of examples that we've um, mocked up for you today. But basically, uh, because it's pulling in your LinkedIn profile image, um, it's it gets a lot of attention from the individuals and they're wanting to see what does your brand, um, what does your brand have to say to them that's going to be so personalized. You can personalize the call to action as well. You can drive them to a landing page and have them interact um, on your landing page or you can drive them to your company page if you so desire. So you would just work with the team at LinkedIn um, explaining to them what would be the best value from a destination standpoint. It's also good if you are needing to run a campaign really quick and you don't have creative yet. Um, so LinkedIn builds these for you because um, we've got the template because we need it to look um, very organic and natural and native. So as long as we can get the call to action and the copy from you, um, we're able to create these quite quickly. And they're quite, quite nice to throw into the mix either as 100% of your display or nice mixing it in with the display you already have in place and have created for the campaign. So benefits for doing display and um, the objectives you'd be trying to accomplish, as you know, it really depends on what your creative and your call to action is, but oftentimes we see marketers focusing on brand awareness, product launches, and just in general traffic driving um, through display initiatives on the platform. So um, one thing we've heard from customers over time and that we were really excited to bring to market earlier this year after we acquired um, Vizzo was the ability to take that targeting, that profile data, um, and not just have the campaigns live on LinkedIn in that very um, business-rich context environment, but some advertisers said, I want to be able to use that targeting and reach marketers anywhere they go on the web. So we now offer that as of this year through LinkedIn network display. Basically, we take that profile um, data and then we're able to use those uh, segments and reach people um, in other places across the web. So um, we're on all the major exchanges in order to get this to happen, such as the Google Ad Exchange. So uh, regardless of whether you're on the, the Indian Express or you're in Australia and you're on the Sydney Morning Herald, or maybe you're in Singapore and you're on Asia One, um, you would be able to leverage your existing display creative, uh, but still reach professionals in this 
um, based on their, their LinkedIn profile details so that you can continue to, to get that message in front of them. It's really fantastic from a frequency and a reach perspective and is a great combination to add on to display. And so you're able to really achieve the same type of marketing objectives you may have for display on LinkedIn.com as you would across um, the network display. So some quick tips to, uh, across display in general. Um, one, I would say if you're using LinkedIn network display, um, we have a very broad range of creative that's available. Basically, any of the IAB um, ad units is available because we're running on the network. Now, on LinkedIn, our primary unit um, is the 3800 by 250. We do have skyscrapers and leaderboards and also text ads as well. Um, but the, the main staple, um, most of our customers would leverage is a 300 by 250, but if you have a lot of other sizes that you want to get across your campaign, definitely use LinkedIn Network Display for that. Um, another thing with LinkedIn Network Display specifically is this campaign, uh, campaigns that use this product, you're going to see the best results if you're in it for the long haul. We all think about share of voice when we're, when we're planning um, media campaigns, and so remember you're running across a ton of sites, and so if you're looking to run a very, very short campaign, LinkedIn is great because we can do roadblocks with your display, but then when you're, you're including the network in it as well, think about running campaigns here for a few months, not just a few weeks, and you'll see the best results because you're able to influence people over time. Then the next element to think about is how you measure success. So, um, Yes, we track impressions and clicks, those are all standards, but when you buy LinkedIn network display, you have an opportunity to include an insights tag, we call it the insights tag. It's a pixel you can put onto your site, which means when you go in to get um, re reporting on LinkedIn, we're able to actually look at actions for you as well. Um, so you can determine what you want that action to be, and then you can see once people got on your site, did they take that action? Have you moved them through the funnel? Um, with this campaign. So I highly encourage you to leverage the Insight tag if you are doing LinkedIn network display. Um, Insight tag is available for two products, one being LinkedIn network display, and the second um, is the next product we're about to talk about, and that's Lead Accelerator. So um, let me describe what Lead Accelerator is for you. Uh, and if you think about it for how you would use it in conjunction, um, I like to think about it as the glue. So all of these other elements that we've talked about and anything else you're doing, actually, whether it's SEO or you're running um, ads on other sites, um, you're driving new people to your landing page. But a lot of times um, after they get to your site, they may not, they may not come back um, or they, you may not know a lot about them. So by using Lead Accelerator, um, you can basically um, get the most out of these other campaigns you've done by reaching out to them. Um, it works, I guess, most similarly to retargeting, but it's kind of like retargeting built specifically uh, for B2B and kind of on steroids a bit. So if you drive people to your site, we can um, then leverage the LinkedIn profile data as well as the behavior data of what they've done on your site to create different buckets or streams so that you can get your message in front of them to come back and take specific action. So um, the ads would run across LinkedIn and our network um, exchange. So you could say, for example, um, I'm a marketing manager, so you would know that about me based on the LinkedIn profile data. I went to your landing page and then I left, but I, maybe I did certain actions as well. Maybe I, maybe I just went to your homepage and bounced, in which case, you want to get just very high level thought leadership information in front of me, but you know I'm a marketer because of LinkedIn, so you're able to put thought leadership pieces related to marketing in front of me. Or maybe I went to your site and I looked at a product page, or I looked at a case study. Um, maybe I signed up, uh, or I didn't sign up for an email newsletter, and, and that is the next thing you want me to do. So you're going to put messaging in front of me now to get me to sign up for a newsletter. So depending on what content you have and what you know about me from LinkedIn and what you know about me from what I did on your site, you then start to put ads in front of me when I come back to LinkedIn. And not just when I'm on LinkedIn, but when I go to other sites in the LinkedIn network display, 
uh, network for, for using a word twice. <laughs> um, so when I go to another site, you get another display out in front of me. And we are also able to use um, sponsored updates as well. So you would be able to engage and nurture me through the sponsored content that you get in front of me um, for, for LinkedIn and other social networks as well. So great tie-in to really build a relationship with people that you know are interested in your brand, but they're not quite um, a fan yet. They're not, they haven't signed up and, and decided to build a relationship with you yet. So as I talk through that story, I think that the main thing that comes to mind is it's great for helping you drive leads. Um, and that is kind of the bedrock of Lead Accelerator, as you can tell, even just by the name. It's about it's speeding up or accelerating the way you're able to capture leads. But depending on the content you have, and it's great for Christy being on the phone today because she uses it for this as well, um, you're actually able to do more than that depending on what the content you have. So we use this, for example, if we want to um, get people to build the affinity, so that thought leadership pieces, or maybe we want them to just come back to the site. Sometimes it's all about generating um, demos and trials for products or signing up for email newsletters and filling out forms. Um, other times we want to get product offers in front, of, in front of folks. So it really just depends on what I want that visitor to do the next time they come to the site and the types of content I have to help them do it. Okay, so takeaways for all five of these products. Hopefully your head isn't spinning too much um, and hopefully you want to find out a little more information about them as well some takeaways for you. Uh, first, I would say, uh, getting back to this whole conversation, we started at the beginning about why people are here and the mindset they're in when they're engaging with content. You want to test a variety of content to find out what resonates with your audience. We had an event um, recently in Singapore, and one of our panelists said, the content you create as a marketer has to compete with the Kardashians. Um, I think that, I thought, A, it was a really tweetable uh, quote, but it's very true. The content that we create has to compete against the other news and information out there. So I haven't seen Kim Kardashian trending on LinkedIn yet, but as you saw from the mindset, um, there's a lot of other content that's happening on LinkedIn, so you can play upon um, what is popular, or you can try and take a different approach as well. Just find out what is working for your audience um, and, and continue to test by optimizing and looking at your data for your performance. I'd also really suggest that you combine products. Um, my mom always said, don't put all of your eggs in one basket, and the same is true with marketing. So we have five products, and they really work nicely in combination. As I mentioned before, InMail, great as a standalone, sponsored updates, great as a standalone, any other products actually, but just as that one example earlier, you can really take advantage of the frequency that you can get um, with sponsored updates and the the deep detail and that kind of personalized invitation of sponsored in-mail when you combine them together. Um, so I highly suggest that you think about um, the type of information you want to share and how you could be creative and just hit people in different ways. Remember, we're, we've, as I said, we've all got ADD, especially at work. We've got a ton of email. We've got a ton of meetings. You need to stand out um, and make people want to take action because even though they're at work, they're going to find value in what you're saying to them. So try a combination of products in order to get people to notice you. So that is the introduction to LinkedIn and what you can do to uh, get started. Um, and I want to leave you with a checklist, uh, or rather some thoughts for getting started, I suppose. It's, it's a good way to think about it. So as you're getting started, I would say the first thing is to remember that context I think I've talked a lot about that, so hopefully um, you don't mind me saying it again, but really that context of you are talking to professionals while they're thinking about work on LinkedIn is key. And then, of course, you can reach those same professionals again through LinkedIn network display when, when they're on other sites um, and really extend that opportunity to engage with them. But um, that context and, and what they're going to find value in when you're on LinkedIn.com is, is quite an important thing to remember when you're just getting started. Um, mixing that content with relevant news, information, and offers. You don't want to be that person who is always 
spamming someone and asking them for something and just um, all all give or sorry all get and no give. So make sure you are you are testing different types of information, not just the tone, but the different types. So sharing sharing news, sharing offers, yes, um, and also creating urgency so that you're making people want to click um, right when they're in the feed or right when they see your ad. And I would say personalization is so important um, with. With Spotlight ads, for example, where you can show someone's image right in there and LinkedIn builds it for you. With sponsored in-mail, where you can make it come from a brand if it's an invitation to a bit, that's a really great thing to do. Or you can make it come from, from the company as well, um, de depending on what the offer is and how strong your, your brand reputation being recognized is. So you can really personalize the offers that you put in front um, by leveraging the, the types of targeting that we have available on the professionals. Uh, and then the last one, something that some people may not think about when they're getting started, if you're using LinkedIn Network Display or you're using LinkedIn Lead Accelerator, you have an opportunity to use the Insights tag. This is going to give you more information about what they do once they get on your site. So yes, that important click-through rate, so you can report that up to your managers about the success of your camp campaign, but also what are they doing once they get there. It can help you uh, a, optimize the, the campaign itself, but B, can help you even optimize your content strategy if you're seeing what, what are people finding interesting about your brand when they're on the site. Um, the other thing is it gives you more information about the site visitors. So we, of course, use Google Analytics so that we can know where people came from before they came to our marketing solutions site. But in addition to that, um, if you're using the insects tag, you can go beyond what did, where did someone come from? You can actually see information about who they are. So what industry, um, for example, are they in? What is their function? What is their seniority? This can really help you. Um, you may be surprised by the type of, of people who stay longer on your site. Um, so definitely check those out if you're using LinkedIn Network Display or Lead Accelerator. So those are our thoughts for you today. Hopefully you want to keep continue and learning more. And um, thanks again for joining us. And we'll start to take questions now. Thank you. Great. Thanks, JB.